belong near a club who, like the city, are steeped in history. One of the founding members of the Serie A, a seven-time winner of the Scudetto, and with one of football's most famed stadiums in the Stadio Renata Dallara. They are a side which deserves to be considered as an important part of football heritage and competing at the top level. However, in more recent times, success has been harder to come by with their last league title coming way back in the 1960s. Following this point, the team endured a turbulent period, with the lowest point resulting in a relegation to the third tier of Italian football as recently as the mid-1990s, amidst a period of battling relegation drops. While the early part of the 21st century didn't see the lows of this level, Bologna changed ownership multiple times during the early 2000s and 2010s due to financial mismanagement, resulting in continued yo-yoing between the top flight and second division, and an expectation among fans for battles of this nature year after year. That is until greater stability was brought under the guise of a Canadian consortium led by Joey Saputo in 2014. With experience within the game leading progress at Montreal Impact, Saputo set about his tenure with bold ambition, and following their return to the top flight in 2015, these only grew, with the owner stating an aim to see Bologna great again within 10 years while flirting with intentions for European football. The years that followed didn't quite bring this level of success, but did at least provide some top flight Validity until the arrival of Mia Volovic, who replaced Inzaghi after a string of bad performances began to threaten the position and their status in the Serie Becoming manager for the second time, under his leadership, the team scored 30 points in his first 17 games. A massive improvement compared to the 14 points achieved under Inzaghi, and thanks to those results, managed to keep Bologna in the top flight with ease, while also retaining his position as manager for the following season. This news came despite his announcement in the summer of 2019 that he had been been diagnosed with an acute form of leukemia, but that he planned to stay in charge of the club while undergoing treatment. While he battled these personal struggles, the following seasons remained consistent under his management over the course of three seasons, achieving 12th and 13th place finishes. Although these were respectable finishes, it was the progress that was being made behind the scenes at the club that was to note of, with quality recruitment clearly visible and the club earning plaudits for discovering hidden gems, something that was aiding their overall progress and also creating significant profits through sales. The likes of Nicolas Dominguez, Tomiyasu and Aaron Hickey arrived during this period who have since departed for solid fees, alongside current stars Orsolini and Skoposki. Yet with this ambition of the board and owners clear and an evident eagerness to elevate the club further, Ladotta made the somewhat controversial decision to part way with the Serbian manager after a winless start to the 2022-23 season. Having taken just three points from their opening five Serie A games, drawing three and losing two, this ended a three and a half year stay at the club for the Serbian. It was certainly a controversial decision, and whilst viewed as the correct one now, at the time was extremely sensitive, coinciding with a difficult moment during his battle with leukemia, a battle that had an unfortunate end with the recently sacked manager passing away several months later in December 2022. While several other candidates, including Paolo Souza and Claudio Ranieri, were shortlisted to replace the outgoing Mialovic, it was Thiago Motta that was appointed to the role in September 2022. The 41-year-old called time on a glorious football career in 2018 after winning a plethora of trophies, including the famous travel with Inter Milan. With extensive experience under some of the game's greatest managers, the Italian began his own coaching career with a job as head coach of PSG's under-19 team, bringing bold ambitions for the future and his own tactics philosophy, which included a revolutionary 272 revealed during an interview, a drastic departure from traditional approaches that reverberated through world football at the time. And while this was incredibly far-reaching and far from what Motta actually wanted to get across, it was a clear sign of his adventurous and forward-thinking approach as a manager, something that caught the eye of Italian side Genoa. He won his first game after taking over in October, but failed to win in eight league games following this point, recording five defeats and three draws that brought an end to his first senior match management role. After these difficulties, it was not until summer of 2021 that the Brazilian-Italian was appointed to a new role, arriving at Italian side Spezia, needing a replacement to fan favourite Vincenzo Italiano, who had been lured by Fiorentina. The side gambled on Thiago Motta after being struck by his energy, dedication, focus and footballing philosophy. For Motta, this was a shot at redemption, and despite arriving at a team widely touted for relegation, Motta overcame a difficult start by turning Spezia's fortunes, including achieving three consecutive wins and a manager of the month award and securing their safety.
Although his tenure proved to be successful, Motta and the club parted ways in the summer of 2022, opening the opportunity for a new challenge for the boying manager. The club in question? Bologna, who he joined in September. It was a challenge to come in and replace a firm favourite in the former Serbian manager, and while they were initially winless in his first four games, things finally began to click. Motta's players began to adapt to a new style of play to great effect, one which focuses on roles and fluidity on the pitch and moves away from set positions, bringing forth a deadly and dynamic side which offers solidity but also brings forth disruptive scenarios where the packed midfield may push beyond the striker and electric wingers push into the open space high up the pitch. By the end of last season, the side achieved a top half finish, concluding in ninth place. As part of this success, credit must also be given to the recruitment team, which has undergone a significant overhaul since the summer of 2020. Giovanni Satori joined as the technical director and brought in a host of new players with the likes of Ferguson, Zerki, Posh, Calafori, Bukamar and Freuler, who have become integral parts of Motta's vision. All this despite dealing with the departure of key players. While last season offered some insight into what could be achieved under Thiago Motta's leadership, the new campaign has brought success beyond the realms many Bologna fans expected. The side currently sits fourth in the table with a points tally the best at this stage for decades, but as impressive as those results have been, it's the calm control of their performances too. Among the individuals that have stood out is Scotsman Lewis Ferguson, who sits at the centre of the frequented 4-2-3-1 formation, acting as something between a number 10 and a box-to-box -box midside, and is an ever-present across the pitch, hard-working, driving his teammates to put in maximum effort. Elsewhere, there is Joshua Zerki, Bologna's top scorer, but also an impressive selfless centre-forward whose intelligent off-the-ball runs are as important as his driving dribbling. Meanwhile, Buukema and Califiori have formed an impressive, consistent pairing in central defence. But all in all, Motta's side strength is as a collective, something the Italian regularly points out in his statements. As the midway point of the season draws near, the future looks bright for the remainder of the season for Bologna under the guidance and tutelage of a rising star manager in Motta.